How's everyone going with their families? <laughs> the reason why I wanted to have this discussion tonight about families is that uh, quite often the biggest amount of pressure you'll have from, for change is going to come from your family. And, and quite often we don't handle it very well because we have the most emotional investment in our family approving of us all the time. And because of this very, very strong emotional investment we have in our family giving us approval, we often have very, very high expectations of our family compared to other people. And as a result of that, a lot of people get onto the divine love path, they start to change, but because of their high expectations of their family, they still have very, very strong projections or demands that their family understand and allow them to go through the changes that they're going through. And these demands and projections are unloving in their own, on their own. And what, so that's one of the things I'd like to address today. Um, so what we want to do today when we look at the family issue is to not look at our families and what they're doing wrong with regard to us, but rather look at ourselves and see what's going on emotionally that gets projected at our families and why these things happen, these interactions happen with our family members and how those projections affect us and how our own projections at our family affect them. And that's very important to understand because then you'll start to understand the dynamics of why there is so much anger and rage sometimes projected at you. Now, when you start on the divine love path, often what happens is that many people around you start getting confronted quite, quite rapidly. And the reason why is because you start acting more in your emotional truth and you start acting more in, in, in your desires and your passions. So the things that you gave up before because of other people, what you have a tendency to do now is to start to do them. And the things that you withheld the truth about before with other people because you're afraid of what the result would be or you're afraid of you know, making everybody upset, now you start speaking this truth. And so there's all, all of a sudden these changes in you that people then uh, feel, obviously, and your family members are going to be the persons who feel them the most. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because they're the ones who know you the best, generally. Now, when I say they know you the best, that's probably not a very true statement. Our family often thinks that they know us the best when in reality they are only knowing us through their emotional filters. And we often think we know our family members well when in reality what we're doing is we're working through our own emotional filters. To actually truly know somebody, you really need to be able to feel their true emotion on any subject. And for the majority of family members, that's very, very difficult. Because if I have an emotion inside of myself of, of grief, that often came from my parents or from my environment, from my siblings. And th that grief is something that those family members would not be in tune to at all. They would actually feel that uh, there is no reason for us to experience grief about things that have happened in the past. Many of them feel that way. And so what we finish up doing is we finish up thinking we know each other when in reality we barely know each other at all anyway. And most of the time with families, we're actually thinking or assuming things to be true when in reality we don't really know or cannot feel the true emotional condition of our families. So what I'd like to do firstly is give a bit of background about what happens in terms of emotional injuries and, and, what, and what goes on in terms of spirit interaction and family interaction. And then what I'd like to do is just talk more about how to handle the pressures that come from your families and how to interact with your families that's in a manner that's harmonious with divine love. Most of the time we finish up reverting back into natural love characteristics when we handle our fam families and even then a lot of times it's not very much love in it. Uh, we have a tendency to project demands and anger and rage and other emotions at our family members when they don't allow us to change. So, so one thing I wanted to state right at the beginning is your family does not have to allow you to change. 
They have free will. So they are allowed to be as resistant as they want to be. Now that doesn't mean that they are in love, they, they are in a space of love when they are resistant towards your changing, but they are allowed to be in that state. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. Now let's look at what happens to our soul. So here's us, here's our soul. Our soul is full of our emotions and desires. Let's just focus on the two things, our emotions and desires or passions. Now, we have influences from our environment, don't we? Remember what they are? Truth-based in, truth, truth influences and error-based influences on our emotional state and our desires. Now, these things, truth and error, primarily come from our environment and they enter us emotionally from the time of conception onwards. So they're coming from our environment and they're entering me as, as emotions and desires. And they often then formulate belief systems as well. So we have whole belief systems tied up with these emotions and desires. Now our environment is primarily, when we are first conceived, our environment is primarily, for many of us or most of us, Mum and dad, isn't it? That's the most immediate environment. And then, of course, if there is, uh, like if we live in a country where there is grandparents living with the parents and so forth, then you could say they, are, they then form a part of the immediate environment. So what we're going to do for a moment is just look at the influence of the environment on our soul as we began our journey in life. So we've got, firstly, we've got our father and our mother. Right. Then they have, as an influence on them, their father and their mother. Each of them, don't they? And can you see that this is going to go back now at infinitum, basically, or, or close to that, in the sense that there's going to be thousands of generations where all of us come down to this person, which is us, the person who has been influenced emotionally and their desires have been influenced. Now, whatever errors and whatever truth is in these, this environmental pressure from a family, is going to enter my soul. And our soul, particularly as it's growing up, of course, can't differentiate between the error and the truth because it actually usually thinks that all of it's truth. And so it just assimilates all of it into itself. Now, when I say it thinks that all of it's truth, it's often taught that all of it is truth, but often even as a child we have feelings of rebellion towards a lot of the things that we receive, don't we? Even as a child, we know certain things don't feel right to us, but we're told they're right, and so we think then we have to accept them. That's the kind of thing that often happens. Now, if we are like the second child, or the third child, or the tenth child for these couple, then obviously we have also a number of other influences that come from these parents towards each of our siblings. So whether we have brothers or sisters, those siblings now, any of them, that, particularly any that are older than us, um, ha will definitely have a major influence in our soul. But also those siblings that are younger than us. So let's put them down here. Any brothers or sisters that are younger than us, they too have also been influenced by our mum and dad. So therefore, even though they're born after us, at some point they are going to have some kind of impact on our soul as well. And also, we will have some influence on their soul even more so if they are our, our younger siblings. Does that make sense? Because they were born after us, we are a part, we form a part of their environmental pressures, if you like. Some of which will be truth and some of which will be error. So what we've finished up constructing, if you like, is this labyrinth of emotional damage and emotional truth, which all of which every single person in this structure believes is truth. So grandpa and grandma on mum's side, they believe wholeheartedly that what they believe is right. 
Because if they thought it was wrong, they'd change it probably, wouldn't they? So they obviously believe that it must be right for them to continue it. They often also have a whole set of emotional damage, which then has been imposed upon my mother, and she will then believe, have a whole set of beliefs that she believes are right and correct. She, and if there was anything that she found out to be wrong, she would have probably changed it by now. So often as we grow older, we become even more fixed in believing that it's right. Does that make sense? More resistive to actually information coming to us because we, through what we call experience, have determined what's right and what's wrong. And we're, this, we're then born into this system of things, this what I would call multi-generational emotional pressure cooker that now we are a part of ourselves. Now we then learn the divine love about divine love. So we learn about divine love and we learn about um, emotions and we learn about how to exercise our free will, we learn about living in truth, we learn about all of these other principles that are a part of the divine love path. Now, that causes massive changes in us at our soul level with regard to our emotions and our desires, does it not? Like many of you have already started to feel this change that's occurred. Some of, some of you are not that happy about the change, right? But it's happening even, sometimes it even happens without you even being consciously aware of it happening. Because as truth influences your soul, automatically emotions start flowing out of your soul. So the more you allow truth to enter you and come to be a part of your awareness, the more emotionally open and the more open to belief change and the more open to desires changing you become. But the entire system around you has been constructed with every single one of these people believing that what they know to be right is right. And you now are the one person in this entire system who's actually having now this presentation to them of maybe this isn't all right. So can you see straight away what's going to happen, can't you? It's pretty obvious what's going to happen in that situation. How, how are they going to go through change without there being some animosity, without there being some anger and resentment and other emotions come up. It's going to be very difficult. For, for all of them to be able to respond to your soul changes with that and still stay in love, every single one of them is going to have to accept the divine love path in their lives. That's the only time you can ever expect the entire group to actually change with you. Now, the likelihood of that happening is very remote, is it not? Right? But many of us have this big expectation that that should happen. So, because what happens is I get so enthusiastic, I, I've been looking for this truth all my life, and I get involved in this truth, and I start practicing, and it's changing my life, my law of attraction is changing, starting to notice things before that I never noticed, and, and all of a sudden all these things and changes are happening to me, and I go into this enthusiastic mode. You know, many of you have been there, right? You want to tell everybody about it, so... And then you realise, whoa, you know, like you tell the first person and they get all angry with you and you go, wow, maybe next time I'll have to just modify it a little. And, and after a while you finish up saying nothing at all to anybody because there's just so much anger coming at you. But the problem that we face is that we expect that not to occur, you see. We actually expect people to always treat us lovingly and that in itself is an unloving expectation. You see, a lot of times our problems begin with our own expectations. So if I, this person who is this soul that's developing in divine love, starts having an expectation of my father, an expectation of my mother, an expectation of my brothers and sisters, an expectation of my grandparents, whether they're still on earth or in the spirit world, I've got these expectations, then I am going to be firstly severely disappointed. Secondly, I'm going to have to work through a lot of emotional injuries about why I'm being unloving to them. Because it's an unloving thing to have expectations of another person to treat you in any way specifically. Now, if I 
push this expectation on them, how can I not expect them to, result, to respond in anger? It's going to be very, very rare, isn't it, for them to not be able to respond in anger if I'm pushing things down their throat. The best way for me to handle this change that's happening in me is to allow the change to continue in me and allow my example to show to the rest of the family. My example that I never get upset every time I'm attacked. My example that I never get, I never get angry back with them. My example that when they attack me, I just cry instead of getting yelling and screaming back at them. All of those, ex that example will demonstrate to them that what's going on inside of me is, is a positive change. Now, initially what happens, though, is they hear about all sorts of things, don't they? They sort of say, all right, where did you hear this about this divine love path? Ah, oh, well, I went along to this seminar of this guy and, and you know, he's a AJ. And what, what's it, have you heard about his past? Yeah, his past is he did this and he did that and there's all this list of things. And then they do some search on the net, you know, all their family start searching on the net trying to find out about this guy, you know. And, of course, there's a lot of distorted information on the net. You can find out all sorts of things there. Hardly any of it being true, of course. And then, and then, you could, then they start to get into panic mode, don't they? many of the family members. Now, that is my law of attraction, ironically. The, the fact that my family are projecting huge amounts of fear at me is actually about my own law of attraction, about my own feelings. Now, now what could it be? It could be that whenever anybody gets angry with me, I'm really tempted to not do what I desire anymore. That could be my law of attraction. And what my family have just done is help me access that emotion. Right? Or it could be that um, I'm very influenced by the idea of cults, you know, like I have some religious background that caused me to worry about cults. So all that, all that has to happen to someone has to be accused of being a cult leader and in our mind that's all of a sudden a red flag and, and we all of a sudden want to stop doing what we're doing. Does that make sense? And our family is the most sensitive emotionally to our own emotional damage. So what that means is they are going to reflect at you in the most intense ways what emotions are left over inside of yourself to deal with before you can become at one with God. Does that make sense to everyone? So while I'm there expecting my family to love me, my family actually is going to be reacting emotionally to me in the most intense ways possible. They are going to be often the ones who trigger me the most emotionally. And if I expect that they love me through this process, <coughs> my expectation in itself is unloving. Because they don't have to love me through this process, actually. Remember, they've got free will. They're allowed to be as angry as they want. They're allowed to be as upset as they want. They're allowed to be as fear-inspiring as they want. They're allowed to be as fearful as they want. They're allowed to say a heap of lies and innuendo and other things about you to others and others about, to you. They're allowed to do whatever they want. And part of this process is you learning through all of that to still remain to be yourself, still stay yourself. That's part of the process. And if you can end up doing that with your family, do you think you're going to be influenced by anyone else after that? Probably not, are you? Once you can learn to do it with, through your family and your relationships and you can stay true to yourself, can you see that it's going to be very, very hard for anybody to, to move you out of the path of love after that point? So they're actually doing us a lot of benefit by doing all of these things with us. And this is what we need to see. So what we want to address is what's going on emotionally for each of these people. And what's actually happening is these people, particularly our parents, but also our siblings and any of our family members, in fact, that are alive, they all have a certain set of emotions. They have emotions that you could say are injuries from a perspective of love, and then they also have a set of emotions that you could say that are not injuries but are rather truth when it comes to love. All right? And these emotions exist in them. So those two types of emotions exist in them 
Every one of them. Now, because they're our family, each one of our family members are going to have a very similar set of emotional injuries and a very similar set of emotional truth in them. Can you see that? And ironically, that is also going to be when we begin on the divine love path, the same kind of emotional injuries that we have in our soul and the same kind of emotional truths that we have inside of our soul. The issue isn't so much when you confront somebody's emotional truth. So in other words, if you are in agreement with a family member, it's highly unlikely that you're going to have an argument, isn't it? It's highly unlikely they're going to stop you from doing what you desire if you are in agreement with each other. So that's not really the area that we have most of our problems. The area that we have most of our problems is in this area here, our emotional injuries. You see, when I release an emotional injury inside of myself and I become truthful and loving in that particular injury as defined by God, not as defined by mankind, but as defined by God, then any emotion that is opposite to that or error-based emotion is automatically confronted. You don't even have to open your mouth. Because there's been an emotional change inside of your soul, every single person who interacts with you will immediately feel a change in you. And that means that every family member is probably going to be the most sensitive to this immediate change in you. And so many of you have had family members, members come up to you and say, Oh, you've changed, right? They say it's a bad thing, right? They say it as if it's a bad thing. Well, from their perspective, it is a bad thing, isn't it? From their perspective, the emotional injury that's still in them that they think is truth has now changed in you. So now you're in a different state than they are. All they feel it is as a, is a different state. That's all they feel. They don't feel anything else, just that you now don't agree with them here, in, the, in your heart. You don't even have to say a word in your mind. You now, they now can feel from you that you don't agree with them in your heart. So what do they do with that? Well, what would you do with that if one of your family members didn't agree with you in their heart? Well, it depends on my emotional injury is what I'll do, doesn't it? If I have an emotional injury that I've got to have everyone else around me agree with me in order for me to feel good, then what I will finish up doing is try to get you back into that emotional injury again, into that state, that state that I believe you should be in. Does that make sense? And I will often do anything at my disposal to do it. And if I'm willing to compromise truth and love, which many times we were before we began the path, willing to compromise truth and love, if I'm willing to compromise truth and love, if I'm willing to lie and bend the rules a bit and, and, and modify things a bit, I'll do a heap of things behind your back to make you change back to that state. I'll bring to pressure prayer from you know, other family members. I'll go behind your back and talk to them. Have you noticed this all change? They go, oh, yeah, yeah, we've noticed this change. And what can we do about it? Oh, well, let's do this or let's do that. You know? And... What they then do is they want to get a whole body of evidence to present to you of all the reasons why you should go back to that state, the state that the family is in. Does that make sense? And that body of evidence is going to be internet uh, postings from all people that they don't know. Any, anybody that agrees with them, whether it's true or not is immaterial, anybody that agrees with them is going to be open <coughs> open slather, they'll, they'll get all of that information, they'll get all that presentation, and eventually they'll get a whole library of stuff together and present it to you. If they're wise, they'll, do, they'll get the whole library together before they even say anything to you, and they'll, and they'll just hammer you with it. When I say if they're wise, if they present it to you dribble by dribble by <coughs> dribble, then you'll know what's going on most of the time. <laughs> but if they present it to you in one big hammer, often we respond to hammers quite readily, you see, emotionally, and so we often change. So, often what happens is we get this great big sledgehammer, right, basically, now coming in our direction. So what do you do with this sledgehammer? Well, what a lot of people finish up doing is getting out their machine gun 
and given the others a plaster as well. It, you know what I mean? That's what often happens in this world, and it's what often happens in families. And, and on the divine life path, as soon as we do that, we are basically off the path, aren't we? Because we're no longer loving, we're no longer being truthful in terms of our own emotional response. So don't get into this trap of responding in kind. Every time you feel like getting angry with a family member because of their attempts to control you or belittle you or whatever, stop trying to respond in kind and start looking at the emotional injury inside of ourselves that causes us to want to respond in kind. Does that make sense? Now, for many of us, that's going to be very, very difficult because these are our family. And we already have an expectation on our family. And our expectation on the family is that family should love me. And that one expectation is going to cause us many times to do many damaging things with our family in terms of the responding emotions that we have. Remember the one thing, your family does not have to love you. Love is a gift. And that includes any love you get from your family. So, so whenever you have an emotional response of, oh, they should love me, they should let me do what I want, why aren't you letting me do what I want, I get angry with them for not letting me do what I want and so forth, as soon as I'm in that space, I am just in the same space that they're in. I have just reduced everything down to that level again. Barbara, if we have a microphone, I think Soraya, wherever Soraya is, there she is. Thanks, Soraya. Bar if we go across to Barbara over here first and then Jen. What about the opposite, AJ? Um, I'm on, my, the shoe's on the other foot for me where I'm, and this could be an emotional injury, I'm not sure. I'm so glad that my family have reacted the way they, are, they have because it's freed me up. And I'm, and I'm happy about that. So in other words, you are driven by guilt when people love you. Which so. is an emotional injury in itself, you see, isn't it? Yes, so, it so if I have a positive response that my family of rubbishing me, yes. then that's also something inside of myself saying, oh, well, okay, maybe I was driven by guilt when, they, when we were all in agreement before. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm not no? quite sure. No. Um, understand that every single emotional injury you have generally has two poles. In other words, it's like north and south pole with regard to our emotional injuries. The midpoint is that I love everyone no matter what they choose to do, no matter how they choose to treat me, no matter what they, how they choose to uh, treat me, if they're angry or violent or abusive even, I will still have love coming from me in that space. That's, that's God's way, if you like. On one side, we have when people attack us, we attack them in return. Does that make sense? So that's one side of that pendulum. If you could think of it like a pendulum swinging, the midpoint here is how God wants us to be. And this point up here is when people attack me, I attack them back. That's still not a place of love, is it? The other part of the pendulum when we're over here is when people attack me, I withdraw. I went running. <laughs> exactly. And that is still the inju an injury. Because when you get to the point where you've worked your way through all of the emotions about it, when people attack you, you'll be able to stay present, but actually stay in love. I don't feel as if I wasn't in love, um, but I was relieved. Why were you relieved? So I was free from my obligations to my family. That's what I'm saying. You felt obligation through love. Does that make sense? And that is an emotional injury. There is no obligation in love. Do you follow me? So, so when you feel obliged to do something, now that now you're not feeling obliged and you feel free, the truth is the error is still present, and that is whenever somebody loves you, you feel obliged. And you need to allow yourself to address that emotional injury inside of yourself. The truth is that love doesn't oblige you to do anything. Right? And you've, in your past, felt quite controlled by love. And many of us have, by the way, because what we were in were, it was not an, a loving situation. So we believed it to be love, and we finished up doing a heap of things because of the love, but we often feel quite controlled by love, in quotation marks, the love. That, and love doesn't ever control us, and nor do we feel controlled when we love. 
So that is an emotional injury that we'll need to work through. The fact that I feel controlled when people love me means that I have an emotional injury to work my way through. When people love me, I will still not feel controlled when I've dealt with that injury. So if you love me, so this is what, this happens quite a lot um, when you're on the divine love path, is people come up to you and give you something, but then get very upset with you when you don't give them something in return. Does that make sense? Sometimes that happens. Now what that means is they had a demand on you in the first place with the first gift. Now often we do that with love. So I come up to you and say, I love you, but in reality I want something from you. Right? And many of us have grown up in that kind of loving environment where someone's loved us, but only when we've given them something in return that they need it. Does that make sense? And this is one of the problems in a family is often we've felt very pressured and controlled by this so-called love because we're always feeling like we've got to give the thing in return. And then when they say, oh, I'll blow you, we don't want to talk to you anymore, we feel relieved because we don't have to give anything now. And that's an indication that that emotional injury still exists within us, that we have always felt obliged by love. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yep. And Jen, yeah. Maybe this is a sidetracking question, but where we get the concept of family from, isn't it a man-made construct? It's from, very much comes so. from over-nurturing or all the nurturing process? Well, where does it come from? Yeah, uh, let's talk real, about the it? one emotional injury that's the real problem here, and that is this belief of this person that, in other words, my parent, that for some reason I and anybody associated with them family-wise is more important than anyone else on the planet. And that's really where the concept of family comes from. We actually start believing that, that anybody who is closely associated with me in terms of blood is more important to me. That they deserve my love and I deserve theirs. There's a belief in that. The truth is that actually from God's perspective, every single person on the planet deserves your love to the same degree. That's the truth. Every single person on this planet. The man who hates your guts, he deserves your love as much as the person who loves you the most deserves your love. Does that make sense? Now when we start having that concept, that actually starts challenge, challenging the basic premise of a family. The basic premise of a family is that, is that blood binds us together. But from God's perspective, blood doesn't bind at all. What binds is this soul-to-soul -soul interaction in love. That's the binding force. Right? What's in our heart and how that affects others and what's in their heart. That's the binding force. But the, this issue of family really came about because of separation from God. And when we separate from God, what we finish up doing is substituting gods in the place of God. Do you understand what I mean by that? We actually substitute people in particular to take the place of our relationship with our true parent. And the people who, of course, take that role and also we then project that, that role are often the people who, what we say, brought us into this world. Right? In other words, they're often the people who had sex and made this body that I'm attached to and I then substitute their rules and their desires and their principles and their passions and their beliefs for this connection with God. Because I can't see God, I can't feel God, I'm very disconnected to God because of all of the emotions that I've had coming from this family. And so what I finish up doing is substituting God, my real parent, and throwing God away really, and then instead putting my family, my mum and my dad in particular, in the place of God. And so they become gods to me. They become the definition of my identity. They become the people who define what I, how I should live my life, where I should live, how, what kind of food I eat, what kind of drink I drink, what kind of person I marry, what, all these things, what kind of religion I practice. Everything in many cases is defined by that particular person that I have growing up believed to be God, my parent. Right? In reality, God is still there. I just 
don't feel that connection because my own parents haven't taught me about that connection and they have a vested interest in also in not teaching me about that connection. All right? Because while I am heavily invested in their life, I am going to be supporting their choices and decisions. When I'm heavily invested in God, when I'm putting God first as a priority, then it's going to be very, very difficult for me to invest in many of their decisions and many of the choices that they try to impose upon me. So it seems to me that this is the ultimate of deceptions. Yes. The, the concept of parents and family as a substitute for God and, and therefore in order to become completely and absolutely God reliant you've then got to overcome this attachment to this belief. Yes. That's really big for me. Yep. You've got to overcome the attachment to this belief that your family are more important to you than anyone else. Because the truth is that when you get into a state of being at one with God, every single person on this planet and every single person you meet in the spirit world will be just as important to you as any of your family members have ever been. So I'm not saying your family members will go down in your estimation. What I'm saying is everybody else will come up in your estimation and you will love everybody in the process. Now, your family is heavily invested in that not occurring. Right? And particularly on the planet today, that's the case. Many families are heavily invested in us as a child still treating mum and dad as if they are the gods. They are the ones who define the rules. When their rules are broken, I no longer have their approval. So th there is some terrible emotions that start rising in us generally as soon as our family members start projecting us that we no longer have their approval and acceptance. And we need to feel our way through those emotions. Instead of yelling, screaming at them and telling them they are doing the wrong thing, we need to understand that this comes from our own deformed definition of love. The pain that I'm feeling in this relationship when I've got a family member attacking me is not actually about the family member attacking me at all, really. In the end, it's about this definition of love that's inside of me that is an error that I need to release from myself. Does that make sense? Does everyone get what I mean by that? You see, it's a fair bit different way of looking at things, isn't it? Like, so. Often what is happening is I will have and take on the definition of love that my, both of my parents taught me to have. All right? That becomes the definition of love. Ironically, associated with that also is the definition of who I am. And that also comes from that interaction in many cases. And what we're trying to do on the divine love path is basically say, that doesn't matter anymore. They're not defining who I am anymore. And they're not defining. All of those relatives up there in the spirit world and here on earth are not defining who I am anymore. What I'm going to do is discover who I am, independent of all of that, by just connecting to my true mum and dad, God, right? And my true mum and dad will be able to help me go through this process of finding who I am. That's really what I've chosen to do. When I'm on the divine love path, that's really what I'm doing. I'm actually reconnecting with real mum and dad, right? And allowing that interaction to grow in me and show to me my true nature and personality that is totally independent of my family predispositions, of my family programming, of my environmental programming, of my racial programming, of my sexual programming, of my gender programming, everything. All of those things in the end are all going to go, be thrown out if you like, and the bits that are truth you'll keep, the bits that are error will all just get thrown out, and in the end you will be able to see yourself truly. You will see the truth of who you are as a person. But that cannot happen while you hold on emotionally to the definitions that other people have of you. And the people with the biggest definitions of you that are false are your family. Because they are the people who have been associated with you for the longest amount of time. And so therefore they think they know you the best. 
but in reality, most of the time, what they know is what they themselves created in you through the emotional programming, the racial programming, the gender-based programming, and all the other programmings that occur from the environment that they accepted for you. Does that make sense? And so in the end, we need to get to the state where we can see the truth of who we really are through this connection with God. That's, that's our goal. It's all right? I've got a slightly top, topsy-turvy one of that because um, recently, just this last weekend, I spent some days with my older children, yep. um, between 23 and 29, three, three daughters, and um, I, I detected a lot of anger from my daughters and uh, I asked them, what's going on? Because they weren't going to say anything and they said, oh, no, just feeling some stuff where, you know, and I said... Uh, I feel it's about me. And so, you know, it all came out and they got incredibly angry with me. So they were 23 um, and The 21? two eldest ones, actually. How old? 28, 28 and 27. 27? And the 23-year-old was ambivalent. Right. And, um, yeah, eventually it came out that they were very angry with me that I was selling my house and making, freeing up some money to... Uh, to go and be on the sanctuary and um, live life quite differently out of the regular social paradigm. Yep. And away from them, they, wanted, they want me to move back to Sydney yep. to be with them. They think I, that's what I should do. Yep. And um, so that they can support me. So they could support so you. So they can support me because okay. I need support in, yep. in their eyes. <laughs> yep. And, um, and you, also you've gotten so old now you can't even look after yourself anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's yep. right. <laughs> Oh, give me another, I don't know, 30 years maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and then it came out in the end, like I was just saying, well, look, I've sort of devoted 30 years of my life to parenting. I've, um, I, you know, I deserve a bit of freedom now to just do what I want, go where I want, see who I want, with who I want. And, and they even just said, you've given AJ money, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you see that you're... Um, you're, can't you see that this man is calling himself Jesus and, and can't you see you're just following a cult <laughs> and uh, that was you isn't know, it that funny was... how it reverts to that when there's actually a lot of emotional inju- it, there's a lot of emotional issues in this isn't it First, firstly mum is now doing what mum wants now can you see firstly we need to see what we've created as parents so the first thing is you created this attitude that's in them now. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, I, I've actually seen just in the last couple of days because I actually withdrew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I came back to the Sunshine Coast, so that was, um, and then I've just gone all quiet because I just wanted to process. Yeah. Um, but, but I didn't mention there that after my eldest daughter attacked me, um, I actually went to the bedroom and I just cr- uh, allowed the emotions to come up and I just cried yep. and cried and cried probably for about an hour or so and um, they were quite disgusted with that. <laughs> My second daughter later on told me, you're just dealing with this like a four-year-old and I thought <laughs> inside I was going, yes, <laughs> but um, no, I didn't do that openly. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say now. Did you ask me a question? Can I ask you a question? No, did you ask me a question? Can I talk about your interaction? Oh, that's right. No, I realised that um, over the, all the years of my parenting, I've sacrificed a lot of my passions, sacrificed my desires. Spot on. Um, actually sacrificed my relationship with God in a lot of ways. Spot on. Um, in order to what? in my wrong, erroneous, you know, idea of providing from my family. Being a good mum. It being a good mum. Yep. And that's what they expected me to keep doing. Exactly. What you did is you created in them a certain definition of what a mum should be. And now you're breaking that definition. You're breaking your own definition of what a <laughs> mum should be. And in their mind, they're like totally confused, aren't they? Like, because they've grown up for 27 and 28 years each. Like, 
what? Like, mum's told us all the lo- This is how she's treated us all our life. She's always done whatever we wanted. Whenever we needed anything, she's always come to our call. Whenever we needed some money, she's always been there. Whenever, and now she's going off and doing her own thing? Yeah, it's no. like love is sacrifice. And now she's not sacrificing, so she doesn't love us. Exactly. Yeah. So, so they were taught love is sacrifice. So now when you're breaking this defini- definition, they're now feeling unloved. Yeah. And now they're getting angry about the feelings of unlove. Mm-hmm. The, the best way to reassure them is to still continue to love them through their anger or state. So rather than withdrawing and getting all upset with them in return, the best way to treat this is deal with your own emotions about being attacked, deal with even your emotions about this being your own creation. Right? So deal with that emotion too. And then at the end, allow yourself to see that, wow, actually... I've I've told them and shown them through every bit of my actions with them that love is sacrifice and now I can start as a parent to teach them something totally different to that. I can teach them that I can still love them and demonstrate this love for them but I won't be sacrificing myself in the process. Mm. Now, that is going to be a big change for them to have mum going from this place where she's always sacrificed herself into this place where she no longer sacrifices herself in order to love. But though they were going to need time now, they're, they're having one of their, their major, their, one of their major definitions about love is just being chucked out of the window by you. Yeah. Right? And so they're going to have a bit of trauma associated with that, aren't they? They've had, they've had 27 and 28 years of this definition that all of a sudden you're telling them through your actions is no longer correct. And, and they're going to need some time to get used to that. They're going to need some love from you to get used to that. And also, when you think about it, because I as the parent created this untruth in them, I as the parent created this untrue belief in them, it, it makes sense that when they're angry with me, they've got a a reason to be angry with me in the sense that they're no longer feeling loved, right? So I can then see, the beauty of this is I can then see as the parent of the the damage that I have actually created here. Does that make sense? And I can pray to God about this damage and I can actually ask for God to help me get to the place of repentance about the damage as well that's been done okay. and also access the underlying causal emotional reason why I damaged them in this way. So in other words, I address this issue that I had that love is sacrifice mm-hmm. inside of me through receiving God's love and changing. Now the instant you do that, their anger will also begin to change. That's the law, the law of attraction will operate in that way. At the moment, you feel very guilty that you've created this in them. Does that make sense? Yes. There's an underlying (laughs) guilt there that, oh, look at the damage I've done. Yeah, what do I do now? But you've just told me, so that's very clear. But you need to also release this guilt from you because it's the guilt that creates their anger. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. I mean, it was the guilt, actually, that created a lot of the sacrifice. It was like that in that cycle. Ironically, the same thing that's creating their anger also created the belief in the first place, which was guilt. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And that's how the law of attraction works perfectly, can you see? Mm. Yep. Mm. So, So when we as the parent are changing and we're affecting our children through the change, our children are going to be very, very sensitive to the changes. And you've got to understand that they, how can they not act angrily? It's going to be very, very difficult for them, isn't it? Their whole concepts of love, a mother's love, is being totally destroyed by our actions now. Now, it needs to be destroyed because it's actually an error. Mm. But from their perspective, they're just feeling the terrible pain of the destruction of this belief inside of them. Mm. That's what they're feeling. W- would, it, would it pay for me to point that out at all? Certainly. To them? If, if, and they, also, give, if they give you the chance to. Yeah. Yeah. Also, th- their justification for being angry with me is that well, actually part of that stomping away that she did was um, after talking about the cult was, all right then, don't let us love you. Don't, don't, um, don't acknowledge that we love and care about you. And that was her justification for being angry with me. So what's her second definition? Her second definition is love 
allows me to be angry with others. To be angry, uh, I, I won't write the rest, to be mm. angry with those I love. Does that make sense? Mm. Many people on this planet believe that. That if I love someone and I feel the pain of something they're doing, I'm allowed to be angry with them. And that's still love. And yeah. that's not love. That's and how do you show them this? See, that, that's a belief that came from you too. <laughs> Can you understand? It came from you. Mm -hmm. so, so how do I now show them, how, help them through that? by showing them that actually you don't have to put up with their anger and that anger is not a loving act. So, I, and I'll talk to them about every time you get angry, every time I've ever been angry with you when you were little, did you feel like I loved you at the time? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously you didn't. You felt hurt, you felt afraid, you felt all sorts of things, right? Shamed maybe if I shamed you. Well, anger isn't loving and what I'm trying to do now is demonstrate that to you. So whenever you get angry with me now, because I'm being, when I'm trying to do something, I am going to say to you, this anger is not loving. Right? Now, why do I feel hurt that they're angry with me? This is something I must address. And this is, a, do you understand? Like, if your children are getting angry with you and you feel hurt, then there's some kind of emotional hook that you have into your children. Right? And there's something to look at there for yourself. Why do I feel hurt about them being angry with me? Well, I don't know. I actually went right back to um, being hurt as a child by my own mother, I think. Yeah. Uh, when I was just crying, I wasn't quite sure what all that was about, but um, yep. they certainly sensed the, the child in me. Yep. Um, and then used that against me as well. Yeah, um, but see, if they're using that against you, the, the actual emotion is still not healed. So let's have a look at the emotion that might be why I'm hurt about my children's anger. You see, I feel myself that I felt that my children could really justify their own anger with me if they wanted to. The reason why is I created everything in them in the first place. Mm. So I created all the error in them in the first place. So when my children were angry with me, and by the way, my boys have been angry with me. And my boys are obviously 20, they're not much younger than yours. So 25 and 23, my boys are. So when they're angry with, when they were, and, they, and, and not now very much angry with me at all, but when they were angry with me, I just said, yes, you have a right to be angry with me. And, and I didn't, but I didn't go away and cry about it because I'd already healed, there's something that you haven't healed there if you go away and cry about them being angry with you. Do you see what I'm saying? If you're going away to cry about a child being angry with you, then there's something you're not understanding about what you've created. There's, there's, a, there's a responsibility that you're not taking here as the parent and what you've created. And the key is to go into that. Now, a lot of times what it is is we're losing our definition of a good mum or a good dad. That's the grief often that we need to feel. Or we're losing our, we're, we're worried now that we're going to lose this connection that we badly want with our children. Or we're worried about guilt or other, other issues. But the key is to understand whenever I feel hurt about anger projections from a child, then I have some emotional hook I need to look mm. at inside of myself. Mm. I, I guess that for me was actually not... I felt the, the last 29 years of, that, oh, well, that was wasted. I would feel really unappreciated now, you know, like I've sacrificed all of this and, and then now want to do my own thing and I can't because you're expecting me to keep doing what I always did, so I felt unappreciated. All right, so let's say, let's look at the feel unappreciated. What is that really? That is an expectation that you are appreciated. Mm. And your children don't have to appreciate you. No. Because if you love them, you would not expect anything of them, including expecting that they appreciate you. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm, yes. So, so when I feel unappreciated, that is not a causal emotion. You follow me? Yes. That is actually just a, a self deception-based emotion mm. that's covering over a truth, and that is, mm. 
I have an expectation of my children that is unloving. Because the truth is that if I chose to give birth to a child, in that moment I also chose to, to look after them for 20 or so years that they needed to look and after. Mm. That's my choice. I made this choice. Inside of me I made this choice. And if, if, if I have any other feeling other than that, then it wasn't love that caused me to make that choice. Right? So if I feel unappreciated by my children, then I am the person who has the problem, not my children. Right? Because feeling unappreciated means I have an expectation that they appreciate me. And any expectation upon anyone is unloving. unloving. So my definition of love is distorted if I f felt unappreciated in the interaction. So if my boys yell at me and tell me, I don't go in a state, I don't go in and say, oh, but I did this for you, I bought cars for you, I let you have, live in these houses, I did this for you and I did that for you all your life. How dare you disrespect me? Right? In that moment, I am feeling disrespected which means I have an expectation they respect me, which is unloving. And it's my definition of love that's faulty, not theirs. Does that come from a, a, a deeper causal um, emotion of being unworthy or um, unworthy of love? Um, it can come from deeper emotions like that, but it can come from a simple thing of having given out for 30 years mm. and expecting something in return. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I've given all of my economic resources to my children, often I then expect them to respect me because of it. So was, was me giving that loving? No. Because I was expecting something in return. It wasn't a loving transaction. I was not unconditionally loving them at the, at the time. I was actually having an expectation of them at the time. I was entering into a bartering system with them at the time. You well, that's that? not nice. <laughs> Which isn't very nice, right? And so whenever you feel unappreciated, unwanted, unloved, any of those feelings, understand that you have an expectation of the opposite and the expectation itself is actually unloving. Now, you still need to go through the emotion of it. Does that make sense? I'm not saying don't go through the emotion of it, but what I am saying is we need to understand that everything is about love in the end. And what we are going to have to release out of ourselves is all the error-based beliefs that we have about love. And most of them are invested in our family. So this, our families are beautiful ways to confront these expectations about love and these beliefs that I have that are all false about love. Does that make sense? So, with your daughters, they are... I created these emotions in them. I need to honour that that I was the creator of this response that, I, that, that I'm now getting. Yes. I am the creator, not them. Mm. I am the creator. Mm. If they didn't have this belief that love is sacrifice, would they be telling me this? If they didn't have this belief that love always does whatever, you know, what, mum, to be a good mum means to sacrifice everything, if they didn't have this belief, which I created through my treatment of them, would they even be saying this to me? No. So I created this. I created it. Let me take responsibility for it. Talk to God about this creation and talk to God about what the underlying emotional reason why I created this in them. And, and, and when I say I, often it's like years and years and years and years of multi-generational programming that created it in me that I still need to release it if I'm going to become at one with God. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? Got so, it. So whenever you feel this huge projection and then you feel these emotions as a result of this projection from your children. Now, in particular, I'm saying children here, not, not parents. Mm. This is to do with children. Whenever you feel these emotions from your children, the first thing we must always keep in mind is, I created this. I created this. They are, my, they are the children I brought up and I influenced with these beliefs. And these false beliefs are now in them. I'm getting rid of them from myself, which is great, but my children still have them there, inside of them. And whenever I'm releasing one from myself, that's going to confront this belief that's inside of them. 
and are bound to, at some point, respond in anger. Yes. What else can, what, what else can they do? Their entire definition of love is being destroyed. Mm. Right? Now, it needs to be, like I said, but it's going to be quite an emotional process for them. It's not that they've chosen the divine love path and saying, oh, yeah, no, that's good. My definition of love's being destroyed now, but I need that destroyed. It's like if they were on the path, they would know that, but they're not on the path in many cases, right? So this is going to happen through you just interacting with them in truth. Mm. It's interesting, my little 16-year-old, well, she's not quite 16, who does live with me full-time here, yep. she just came up to me and said, Mum, they don't know you. They don't know you now. Mm. And that's very true. Yeah. The truth is probably you don't know them either because of these definitions, right? But you're certainly knowing them more as you're getting more in touch with your own emotional condition. Yeah. Yeah, and you're getting to know them more. So your 16-year-old mm. daughter, very wise person. Yeah, she is. Isn't she? Like, yeah. be, and because she's with you, noticing these changes and liking them and feeling less projection from you, obviously, she is not as hooked into these belief systems. No. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. And if we come down, uh, sorry. Yep, go across there. Yeah, that's fine. And then across to Jan. Work our way down, actually, Will. Um, yeah, I, I just disagree with so much of what you're saying and I think it's like really quite destructive to just be that this is the path and stuff. I mean, as you say, that there's free will and, and I think it's all about choice and, and if something's, um, if, if the ideal, if, like I don't think it's all about the, the loving thing to do all, all the time and I don't think that processing your emotions and getting to a perfect state of being in harmony with them is necessarily the way to go. Like, I'm all for people improving themselves, but um, I think you also have to have a look at the impact that, that has on other people as well. Um, yeah, and, and also just like the advice that, the, that you gave to this lady about her and her relationship with her kids and how it's going to, like, what, what emotions that they're going to go through and how they're going to react. Like, you don't know that. Like, they could disconnect with her and be like, screw you, I'm, you're not my mum anymore. And, and that's a choice that you may have to deal with if, if, if that's, you know, what and you're choosing to, to do. And, and, and they agree. make that choice and you could make this choice. And, yep. and I understand the grief involved and, like, I don't, I don't know. I think it's okay, like, that you can help people to get to a place of understanding where they're at and sort of um, uh, accepting like some of the, the things that they've created but it's also not just all, um, you haven't created everything in your children, there's also all the other influences in society and stuff like that. Yeah but see what I believe is that every interaction your child has with you, you definitely create it. Every interaction your child has with, say, their father, your, their father created. Every interaction your child has with their sister, their sister finishes up creating. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's to do with the interaction with each individual. What I'm doing, when I'm answering a question like Soraya's, I'm focused on what interaction is happening between Soraya and her emotional state and what's going on with her children, which interaction they were reflecting to her with their anger with her. So... Yeah. And, but I'm perfectly agree in agreement with you about free will. Everyone's allowed to do their own thing yeah. and they don't have to do anything different. But you and I vary quite markedly with regard to some other beliefs and that's fine. You're allowed to have your belief and I'm allowed to have mine. Yeah, um, and also relating it all back to God, like for us that don't believe in God or anything well, like that. Well, the truth is that everything I present always relates back to God because I have a very firm belief in God. And, and so you're, you're, again, able to have a completely different belief. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not saying you have to believe in God. Yeah. However, I'm saying that if you follow certain things, you will find that God does exist, and then you will also find you can connect to God because you're one of God's children. But again, you don't have to believe that. And Everybody also, here who comes to these sessions yeah. doesn't necessarily believe that, mm. but it is what... The whole reason why I do these sessions is because I'm teaching people how to become at one with God. Yeah, and I'm also sort of, like, I'm okay with...
people discovering their feelings and stuff. Like yep. my brother's sort of on the path. Yeah. Um, as unhappy as that sort of makes me feel because I feel worried about him yep. being on the path. And, um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, like I'm not sure about the, the crying, like that, that sort of method of dealing with, with your emotions. I think there may be other better ways, but it doesn't seem to be that you teach other ways and, and that, you know, that you relate it back to that there's choice. And, like, it seems to be this is the way. Yes, this is the way. Well, no, and, like and I, the not way enough I feel, reminding that there's other ways. Well, the way perhaps. I feel is that there's millions of other ways that the earth is bombarded with through lots of different teachings. And what I'm teaching is a one way that you can choose to do. Now, now I'm perfectly happy with every single person on this planet choosing a different way than what I'm teaching. Yep. So I'm perfectly okay with that. But the people who want to choose this path have found that it is the most effective way to progress and to release causal emotional injuries. And if I can explain why, when you're a child, what happens is that many emotions get locked up in you because of suppression of your environment. So when you're a little baby or a child growing up, what happens is many times you start to have an emotional experience. Let's say you cut your arm or cut your leg, just have an accident like that. You start to have an emotional experience from that particular event. But what often then happens is people in your environment, most of which are your family or, or your parents, shut down that particular emotional experience. And what I've found through my own experience is that when that shuts down, it locks up in a certain part of your body, which is the result of it locking up in your soul, this emotional experience. Now, that emotional experience, if it remains locked up, will determine what happens in future to a similar, to a similar, similar events. And in fact, will even attract events of a like nature in order to trigger itself fully and release the emotion fully. So, so unless you choose to release the emotion completely, the experience that I've had and many others who have come along to these sessions regularly, uh, including, I suggest, your brother, um, have had is that when they release the emotion fully that's been locked up, then they feel a shift in themselves and they don't ever have to deal with that issue again. So we, of we often have these huge emotional injuries from our childhood that are still locked up within, within us and unless we release them, we will not grow from those, we will not go beyond those experiences. And what will be attracted to us the rest of our life will be always surrounding those similar experiences. When you release the emotion completely, what happens is that all of a sudden your law of attraction changes and you no longer have similar experiences anymore. So let's say one of those experiences was you were hurt by a woman in the past. Right? Let's say a woman, maybe mother, or it could have been you know, a girl when you were at school or whatever, where you gave her your heart and then she, she criticised you and rubbished you and, you know, and hung you out to dry, as the saying goes nowadays, and you didn't let yourself cry about that particular emotional experience, what will happen is that emotion will stay locked up inside of you and generate future experiences of like nature in itself in order to trigger the emotion. Does that make sense? And then what happens is if I don't release that emotion, I will continue to attract women who treat me badly and leave me. Um, yeah, I, I understand. Like, I, and I probably agree with that, um, that the experiences that you have throughout life affect um, how you feel in certain other situations that are like that. Yep. But I, I don't necessarily agree that you attract it back in. But yeah, and, and, and what I'm doing is teaching people that that is true. But, but we can disagree on that matter because you're allowed to have your own opinion. Yeah, I, I guess when it's um, like, like you, your opinion's just like one opinion. So like when, when you say that it's like, oh, it, people think it's like a cult, that would be the reason why because you're leading that this is my opinion No, can you? and can, people are following that. Can I address so, that issue? Firstly... Yeah. Every single person that applies this in their life finds that that is the truth. Every single person who doesn't agree with it won't even begin to apply it in their lives and so therefore won't know whether it's true or not. So my suggestion to you is if you try what your brother is trying through experimentation rather than through judgement, you may find out in the end that it's actually right. And then you will feel 
probably very similar to him, that it does actually work and it is the right way to deal with your emotions. And I believe that because God exists, God always created the right way or the way that's the most effective and loving to deal with anything. Now, I know you don't have that belief and that's fine. You're allowed to have your belief too. But I feel that that is provable if you find the right way and experiment with it. So all I'm suggesting to the people that are here is instead of locking yourself down by, through the intellect and saying, I don't believe this or I don't believe that or your beliefs are just different to mine or whatever, just experiment with the whole thing and see whether it's right from experimentation rather than from the point of view of intellectually and analysing it first. Yeah. Does um, that make sense? Yeah, but how do you address the, like, the danger with doing that? Like, it's easy to say, but have there been people on the path that haven't dealt with it well or it hasn't, um, I don't know, it's affected their not lives negatively? And yes, there are dangers, I yeah. agree. Um, and the danger is when we're, not, when we're not completely in tune with ourselves, then we are in danger of following a person and following a cult and following you know, belief systems that eventually damage us. When we stay in tune with ourselves, which is what I'm encouraging everyone here to do, to stay in tune with themselves and experiment with things themselves rather than going through me or you know, just believing everything I say, experiment with it yourself, when you experiment with it yourself, you then can use your own knowledge, your own intellect, your own intelligence and everything to work your way through those issues. And in the end, you will learn to trust yourself the most. And the beauty of trusting yourself the most is you become an individual in that point and therefore the least amount able to be influenced by others. So while many people who, come, who observe people coming along to these groups feel that these people here are actually quite controlled by me, all of the people, or most of the people coming along here know that actually I'm encouraging them to do the opposite to that, which is actually to feel their own emotions and desires and passions and longings and follow those, whatever well, may, those maybe. be. Maybe, but you're also sort of, you're disconnecting some of their um, closest ties with, with family. And no, family. I'm not. I am it's never disconnecting be. any ties with anyone and I am not responsible for that. Can I explain why? Yeah. Because what I'm encouraging them to do is to live in harmony with truth and love in their own feelings in themselves. And when they do that, whatever cutting of ties that happens with family or friends or anyone else will occur through them getting into a state where they're being honest with everybody around them instead of being dishonest with everyone around them. So what's often happening on the planet today is we, there's ourselves and here's our close friend but we don't tell him all of our truth and then there's another friend we have here you know and we don't tell her all of our truth and then we have mum you know and mum no we hold a lot back from mum right because she doesn't want to know about the dangerous things I do and she doesn't want to know about we don't we, we, she wants to know of course but we don't want to tell her because we're afraid of what she's going to do with it. And then with dad, you know, we hold things back from dad because he doesn't need to know about this girl on the side that I've got and whatever else. And so what we finish up doing is we finish up having interactions with each individual that is actually based on not the truth of ourself. And what I'm encouraging people to do instead of that is to focus on every single interaction with every single person in their family, friends, environment, work, everything, to be focused on a truthful interaction. And if it's focused, my belief is, and this may differ from yours, but my belief is that if every one of these is a truthful interaction, we will have the most joy in our life in the long term. If every one of these is an interaction based on lies or deceit or part deceit or part lies or part untruths, sooner or later these untruths will come out, sooner or later the lies will come out, sooner or later the distortion comes out and we will actually finish up having very, in, very um, disconnected relationships with these people. My belief is when you act in harmony with truth inside of yourself, that's when you have the best relationship with every single person who's in your life. And the people in your life who can't cope with it, leave your life. And the people who in your life who, who love you doing that and love you being you will want to stay in your life for the rest of it. And, and that's the point that you're saying that the, the end justifies the means. And I, I disagree with that point because 
Yeah, you know, you may come to a place where, and I guess it's about choice if you feel to choose to, to go to that place where, where you're following what you're saying and you're trying to become a, a better you and more loving for people and that sort of thing. But you're pushing away your family or they're, they're feeling pushed so away. I, I've never encouraged the pushing away of a family member. No, but maybe they're choosing to feel pushed away or... Well, what? that's their choice. Yeah, it is their choice, but and it's what, also your by choice. By your own definition, because you were saying everyone's entitled to their choice, Yeah. by their own definition, it's not the person who's following the path that's causing the problem then, it's the person who's making the choice to step away. Well, it's both, two to tango. I don't feel so. If a person, if you are staying in your personal truth, then anybody who wants to no longer relate to you in that space, it's their choice, I agree. They are allowed to make, this person's allowed to make that choice. They're allowed to do what they want, but they can't blame him for that because he is accepting them and they are not accepting him. Well, they can blame. Or they can, yeah. but not truthfully so. Well, it's, it's the reality, not the truth. Oh, yeah, I know it's the reality, but I agree it's also not the truth. Like, the truth is that if this person wants to blame him for his changes, then this person's got a problem, not him. But and the same applies, by the way, here. If he wants to blame them for their changes, yeah. then he's got the problem, not them. It's the same thing either way. So what I'm saying to you is every single person on this planet eventually will get to live their lives exactly the way they desire it, and passionately so, passionately desire it to live their life, and everyone around us will accept it and, and actually love us for it. And that's or what maybe, I believe. maybe not. Sorry? You may be right, you may be wrong. Well, I believe that's yeah. true. We'll see what comes out in the end, yeah. won't we? But, but what I'm saying to you is that this person here, if he blames this person who's changing for the distance that's occurring, and this person here still wants a close relationship, then this person, it's this person's emotions that are, are the cause of that, not this person's. See, if I desire to have a relationship with you, but, you're up, but, but you don't want to have a truthful relationship with me, then in the end, how, how can I change that if I stay in truth? I can't. The only way I can do it is start lying again. And I, I would definitely not recommend that because as soon as you do that to yourself, you now start creating, my belief is you start to now create very damaging effects to your own life as a result. Well, perhaps it's a little bit less about blame and more about the reality. So, so if you're on the path then and you're choosing the path, that's your choice. Yep. And, and good things may come of it, but also the bad things may come of it as well, which yeah, is reality. Yeah, but it won't be, the, won't be because you're choosing to follow a path. It would be because other people don't accept that path. And that, that's their entitlement. They don't have to accept that path. Yeah, well, but yeah, I, okay. See, I so, would not, so, I would not know. choose to damage your life just because you disagree with me. I would not get on the net. What's your name? Bjorn. Bjorn? I wouldn't get on the net and say, oh, Bourne's a bugger and Bourne's this and Bourne's that because he all disagrees with me. I wouldn't do that because I love you enough to let you have your own life, right? Now, if, if, imagine if we were fr family, if we were family, like I was your brother and we were brothers, right? And if you, Braun, started to, you decided that you wanted to go overseas and live in South America, in, in Bolivia or something like that, is that in South America? Yep. And, uh, and, and then, and then I, I say, oh, but you know, you're going over there, they've got a, they've got a regime over there that's very damaging, you might be political, you know, so, uh, in other words, all my fears start coming up about that, mm -hmm. right? Now, if I start rubbishing you about that, all I'm rubbishing you for is me having these fears. That's all I'm rubbishing you for. Yep. Right? I, if I want to have a relationship with you still and you want to do what you want to do, then I would need to work through my fears and I would need to say, all right, what's the problem with him doing that? And even if he dies, what's the problem with that? Right? At the end of the day, he's enjoying himself before he passed. What's yeah. the problem with that? Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is I would deal with my emotions about it so that we could continue our relationship rather than trying to damage your life by my saying to you, don't go, how dare you go, you know, you're going to destroy all these things around here and I could dump all this anger and resentment and everything on you. Yep. But that's not going to help our, our relationship at all. You know, the, to a certain extent, I, I think that that's, that's quite a, a good place to be. Yep. And sometimes I find myself in that situation, but then, you know, it's also that you can't control how the other person is feeling. So, you know, okay, yeah, you're not I, like I don't, me. I don't want to control how the other person is feeling, though. Yeah. 
I don't want to. I, I know that they might be angry with me, and that's kind of fine. If they, if See, they want I don't know if that's fine. Don't well, that's, that's fine. their choice. I, I, if I'm it is that choice, but you're making choices as well. Yeah, but I'm allowed to make choices for my own life. If they choose to be angry with me, that's their choice for their life, and they're allowed to make that too. I'm allowed to make my choices for my life. Yeah, and you've got to live with the consequences of that choice. Of course. Yeah. I'm very happy to live with the consequences of that choice. Uh, well, yeah. if you're happy to live with the consequences of the choice, then exactly. that's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Just and as long and as everybody on the planet that. should be happy to live with the consequences of their choices, shouldn't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's quarter past eight. Right. <laughs> so, so do you understand where I'm coming from, though? What I'm basically saying is every single person on this planet and every single person in a family is allowed to have their own free will. They are allowed to make their own choices. If I decide, if this is me and I decide to make a choice that's for my life, not for other people's life, but for my life, and I decide to make a choice and I follow that particular choice, whatever that choice may be, if my family members get upset with me about it, that is their choice. That is their pro problem. Now, I will have to deal with the consequences of them being upset with me, and part of the consequence might be I might not have much to do with my brother because he just doesn't like my choice. Right? That might be one of the consequences. And if I'm really hot on the choice, like the choice might be marrying somebody right, that my brother doesn't like. And if I'm really hot on the girl, do you think I'm going to care what my brother feels about it? I'm just going to say, sorry, mate, like, it's my choice, my life, my partner. Yep. I'm allowed to make this choice. And if you can't live with it, you're not going to be in my life until you can live with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm allowed to make that choice just like he's allowed to make the choice to totally be upset with me about it exactly. for the rest of his life. Yep. Yep. That, okay. And that's what I feel. Yep. Yep. All right, well, let's have a break. Should we make it 20 minutes? Is that all right? <laughs> and we'll come back at quarter to nine. <laughs>